Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be taking a bloody good squint at the OnePlus Nord 2 CE. I f***ed it up again every time. It's, it's the OnePlus Nord CE 2. The OnePlus Nord CE 2. You know, that's the best take I've had out of about five or six attempts, so it's staying in. The OnePlus Nord CE2 will cost you just 299 quid or 349 euros. The pre-orders open on the 3rd of March and it goes on sale on the 10th of March here in the UK in the likes of John Lewis and Amazon. And despite that low asking price, the specs seem pretty bloody solid. You've got a Super AMOLED display on there, Dimensity 900 chipset, you've got 65 watt Super VOOC charging support. Anyway, enough rambling, let's whip it on out the box, take you on a tour of that hardware and software. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, like the OnePlus Nord CE2, uh, definitely please do pork subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, let's have a squint at what you get in the box. And of course you get a OnePlus Nord CE2. You get that big old beefy 65 watt Super VOOC charger. Usual bit of bright red USB cable action. OnePlus has kindly chucked in a condom case to slap around your Nord CE2 and keep it safe from harm. And as usual, you've got the usual welcome letter complete with little doodles of all the people who worked on it, including some random dog who's there every time. Andy the dog, apparently. I'd like to know what his contribution to it is uh, overall, really. Maybe does the moisture test by slobbering all over the thing. And you got a wee uh, welcome sort of bit of blurb there as well. Stay true, bitches. And there you have it, that's all the lovely stuff you get bundled in the box. So now let's check out the OnePlus Nord CE2. So here it is, our first look at the OnePlus Nord CE2. And gotta say, you know, not particularly remarkable design, although rather smart and tidy. At a shade over 6.4 inches, it is one of the more compact smartphones around in 2022, comparable to the Realme 9 Pro Plus, which I just reviewed. Just 78 mils in total, so rather slender as well. You've got a Gorilla Glass 5 display up front. You've got a pre-installed screen protector on there as well for extra protection, which is always good to see. And then flip it around and it is just your glossy plastic rear end. And when I say glossy, I mean super, super shiny. This is the grey mirror finish and they weren't kidding. It is actually a mirror. You can do your hair in it or your eyebrows in my case. It doesn't have the sort of smoked uh, fog effect uh, of previous OnePlus smartphones, but that's just as well because they tended to put it up at the top rather than at the bottom where you're actually clutching it to help actually mask the grubby fingerprints and dust. And yes, this thing does pick up uh, the old finger smears rather easily. And as well as grey mirror, you can also grab the OnePlus Nord CE2 in Bahama Blue, which sounds rather exotic. And it is splash proof as well, so obviously fine if you want to take it out in a bit of a drizzle or you accidentally spill a bit of your pint on it, uh, but don't go fully submerging it. There's no official IP rating, uh, which is pretty standard at this sort of budget price point. And along with the phone, OnePlus very kindly chucked over a couple of the official Nord CE2 cases. Let's check those out. So first up, we've got the Sandstone Black Bumper Case. Let's just slip that in there. And if you really don't want to see yourself in the back end of the OnePlus Nord CE2, or you just fancy a more textured finish then I guess that'll do the job but seems a little bit boring really. Far more joyous overall is the Blue Vacation bumper case once again with that sandstone finish so you get that lovely textured grip. Does add a bit of chunk onto the old OnePlus Nord CE2 but nothing too horrific. Now I'm now going to shove my SIM card inside of the OnePlus Nord CE2 and as you can see here it is a fully featured SIM tray. You've got room for two SIMs on one side and then flip it around you got space there for a micro SD memory card, great stuff. So the OnePlus Nord CE2 all set up, good to go. And unfortunately it is the older Android 11 still on here, similar to what you had on the Redmi Note 11 Pro, which I recently reviewed. Definitely would have been great to see the fresher Android 12 on here, especially as that came pre-installed on the Realme 9 Pro Plus. So here's what we're not waiting too long for an update to Android 12, but OnePlus is at least promising two OS updates, so to 12 and then to 13, presumably beyond that, and also regular security updates for three years. And then sat on top of Android 11, as always, you've got OnePlus's own Oxygen OS 11, which adds in all the usual bonus bits, including the shelf feature. And as always, if you don't like the shelf, you'd rather just have your notifications bar pop up instead. You can change that in the swipe down to access section. That gives you more of a stock Android style setup. And as always, Oxygen OS adds in a bugger ton of bonus features that you can play about with. Fan favourites like the uh, good old Zen mode, of course, if life is absolutely kicking your ass and you just need a bit of chill time. I really like the personalisation section, which just allows you to tweak and customise the general UI. So the standard stuff like the wallpapers and, of course, the uh, ambient display. 
but then you can dive in even deeper and change up the likes of the fonts, the icons, the horizon light, which is like a notifications light, which just flashes at both edges when you get something popping in. Sadly, because it's not Android 12, you can't change up the UI color scheme based on what wallpaper you're using. You to do some manual tweaking if you like. So yeah, lots of great stuff tucked away in there. And thankfully, unlike a lot of rivals like Xiaomi, for instance, you don't get tons of crapware piled onto your OnePlus smartphone. The OnePlus has chucked on a couple of apps of its own, including the Games app, which I will hit on later for the performance side of things. Got the usual highly exciting fare like the Clock app. For your security, you've got an in-display fingerprint sensor, just a simple optical effort, but it seems to do the job absolutely fine here on the OnePlus Nord CE2. And as ever, if you can't use that because your mitts are a bit grubby or whatever, you've got a bit of uh, face recognition support on there as well. You can uh, have it just unlock straight away, otherwise have the usual swipe to unlock if you prefer that. And the OnePlus Nord CE2 comes with 128 gigs of storage uh, by default. Where the hell is the storage? Have I gone past it? Am I going absolutely insane? There it is. And not a huge chunk of that used up by the system uh, to begin with, which is always good to see. And as I mentioned before, expandable via micro SD up to a further terabyte if needed. So let's shift on to the media performance and what you got here is a 6.43 inch display fairly sizable not quite as spacious as some out there but more than good enough for watching a bit of netflix youtube whatever and surrounded there by reasonably skinny bezel slightly fatter lip but nothing too horrendous it's an amoled display like a lot of rivals like the redmi note 11 pro the realme 9 pro plus so once again sharp contrast we've actually got full hdr 10 plus support on this thing nice poppy colors as well especially on the default vivid screen color mode so yeah your anime your general animated features look absolutely lush it goes to a really nice strong brightness as well so the oneplus nord ce2 no issues with visibility outdoors nice wide viewing angles as well the colors don't distort or anything like that as you tilt the screen away from your face if you dive on into the display settings, you've got the usual eye comfort mode and everything. You can tinker with the color temperature and output, and you can also play around with the screen refresh rate as well, which is set to high 90 hertz by default. Sadly, no dynamic refresh rate option here on the OnePlus Nord CE2, so you can bump it down to 60 hertz manually if you'd rather preserve battery life. Otherwise, just leave it at that 90 hertz level. The OnePlus Nord CE2 sports a basic mono speaker setup. Sadly, there's no stereo speaker setup, unlike on some rivals. But let's see if it's actually any good. That should do it. And you know what? It's only gone and bloody survived. That single speaker is rather tinny. The output's not particularly enjoyable, to be honest. So I would highly recommend definitely plug it in. Good bit of headphone jack action down here on the bottom end. Otherwise, of course, you've got the usual Bluetooth smarts as well. Now, the OnePlus Nord CE2 is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 900 chipset, backed by 8 gigs of RAM. And so far, I haven't had about 24 hours with OnePlus Nord CE2. The performance seems absolutely fine. Everything seems pretty responsive. Apps seem to load up straight away. It's exactly what I would expect from the Dimensity 900 chipset. I've also done a bit of Geekbench, and it's pretty respectable scores all around, especially considering the £300 price point. But of course, the true test is a good bit of gaming, so let's jump on into that games app. And let's do a bit of uh, Genshin Impact, because I don't think Wordly will be much of a test. And when you're blasting your way through the latest Android titles, you've got a revamped gaming mode here on the OnePlus Nord CE2. This offers a good selection of features. You've got the likes of the Pro Gaming mode, which can just completely block all notifications and really dedicate all of the phone's resources to your game and keep you competitive, certainly as competitive as someone like me could ever be. You've also got the screen recorder feature, the likes of rewind recorder as well, which will constantly save 30 seconds worth of footage in the background. And when you tap that, it will store it for good. You can also check out your current frame rate and the CPU and GPU usage. And last up, very handy for some of those ultra competitive games like Call of Duty and PUBG. You can change up the touch settings as well, so the sensitivity. So overall, pretty comprehensive stuff. And of course, having a lovely gaming mode is very nice and all, but can the OnePlus Nord CE2 actually handle games? Well, Genshin Impact did certainly struggle a fair bit on the default low detail settings, unfortunately. Sort of fair few frame rate drops are usually during you know intensive battle sequences. And the game was still perfectly playable, but it wasn't as enjoyable as it is on some rivals, which have a slightly beefier SOC. So after a while, I switched from Genshin Impact and tried a bit of Call of Duty Mobile instead. And that was a much stronger gaming experience on the higher detail settings, played absolutely 
flawlessly, no dropped frames as far as I could see, certainly my knackered old peepers. The screen responsiveness was absolutely wonderful, no issues there at all, uh, certainly no issues with the networking or anything, and yeah, I generally sucked as I usually do at these games, but that's down to me, not the hardware. And like most other budget rivals these days, the Dimensity 900 chipset packed inside of the OnePlus Nord CE2 means you get full 5G support on here, which is great to see. You've also got Wi-Fi 6 support too. So certainly no wars when it comes to the connectivity. And as for the battery life, well, you've got a 4,500 milliamp cell stuffed inside of this OnePlus blower. And so far, it doesn't seem to drop too harshly when you're gaming or streaming video or doing anything with the screen on. But I've got my SIM in there. I'll be testing it out for about a week or so. So stay tuned for my in-depth review for a full final frank verdict on that battery life. And the good news is that even when the OnePlus Nord CE2 is fully drained, well, you got that Super VOOC 65 watt fast charging support that we know and love from Oppo's Blows that uses dual cell tech. So you can get that fully charged back up again from empty in just over half an hour. Otherwise, if you do want to charge it up overnight, just plug it in. Uh, it does support the trickle charging as well, so you won't absolutely balk your battery, and hopefully that battery life should stay good over time. So let's end this delightful wee video on the OnePlus Nord CE2 by taking a squint at the rear camera chops. And what we got here is a 64 megapixel primary sensor. It's the same sensor tech as used on the original Nord CE. Now, despite the same hardware being stuffed inside of this thing, OnePlus claims that the camera output will have actually improved because of the MediaTek Dimensity's camera smarts. And of course, I will be fully testing out that camera tech for my in-depth review, so stay tuned to see if that's actually the case. In the meantime, here's a small selection of sample shots that I just quickly snapped around my homestead over the last 24 hours to get an idea of how it performs in lower light, ambient light, etc. If you want a more pulled back view of the action, you've got that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And then last up, the final lens around back is your basic bog standard macro lens if you want to get really up close and personal. Maybe ever so slightly terrifying. And naturally, you've got the usual selection of bonus camera modes here on the OnePlus Nord CE2, although you can't access them just by pulling up like so like you could on previous OnePluses, which is a shame. But you've got the likes of the portrait mode to add a nice bokeh style background effect. You can change the intensity of that blur. You've got your night mode, of course, as well, which uh, comes in quite handy for those low light shots. And if you flick right to the end, you've got uh, even more bonus modes that you can check out as well, including the likes of slow-mo, time-lapse. And for your whole movies, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at 30 frames per second. No 60 FPS option there. But here's, again, just a brief sample of what you can expect. Stay tuned for my in-depth review for more. And then finally, around front, it is a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. You've got full HDR uh, functionality there. You can swap to the portrait mode, as usual, if you want to make it all about you, blur out the background. And I guess I'll be testing this bloody thing over the next uh, week or so as well and hopefully doing a better job than that. And there you have it, that in a nutshell, kiddies, is the OnePlus Nord CE2, which will be available in March for 300 quid or 350 euros. Full review is imminent, but what do you reckon? Are you tempted by this bad boy over the likes of the Redmi Note 11 Pro, the Realme 9 Pro, the 9 Pro Plus? Well, I'd be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.